think I'd rather just clone Blessing of Targon. So I think I just open with Guiding Touch the Tarek, and then I like Blessing and buff Draven or something. I could buff Sparklefly. I don't know, do I really- Why am I buffing Draven? What am I talking about? This is just way better. Wait, is he dead? Wait, are you dead? Hang on, buddy. You're not dead here, are you? Hey guys, how's it going? I apologize that it's a little dark here, but we just finished an eight hour stream over on Twitch. And yeah, we spent today building this deck. This was actually a lot of fun. I had some of the some of the most fun I had streaming in a while. That might have been because I haven't streamed in the last week. But that aside, you know, don't worry about that. Uh, this this is a really cool deck. We were actually climbing with it in Masters, which is pretty impressive because it looks like a meme deck, right? Um, but it had a pretty high win rate in Masters. Again, I'm I'm not gonna look. Listen. This isn't like a pure meme deck, like it will win you games, but I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that this is like a high tier deck. If you wanna win games and that's your main objective, then there's definitely some better decks. You can check out the tier list on the website that I currently have. I uh, actually am probably gonna update this in the next day or two. But this is a deck that would probably fall into a tier three category, um, like low 50% win rate, that would be like 52% win rate. And it is a really cool concept. What we're doing here is we are pulling out Draven very reliably with Draven's biggest fan. That's going to be like a 90% chance to have Draven on turn uh, 4 uh, at the very latest. But mostly we're playing Tarek. So we're going to be playing Draven on turn 3 into Tarek on turn 4 in most games. And Tarek will have a big blowout potential with, of course, being able to clone some of the value spells as well as might. Now, this is running out of the way. Out of the way is actually working hilariously well in this deck. I don't know if it'll stay as a three of, but one thing I can tell you is that when the new card is added, uh, the Aphelios card, Gifts from Beyond, that can make the temporary lifesteal weapon, Severum, suddenly, out of the way, actually becomes pretty unironic in this deck. So overall, it's ends up working pretty well for this deck right now, but it will actually work a lot better for it once we have that new card, once we have Severum. So it's a pretty fun build. I'm not gonna do like a full deck guide for this build um, because honestly it's not, actually I might do a deck guide a little bit later, but I just wanted to kind of like show you guys the deck and some of the games that we played earlier today on stream. If I end up refining this a bit, if I get this deck to a tier two win rate, um, then I'll absolutely be playing it on, on stream and uh, refining it even more. And then maybe I'll do a deck guide about it. But the way this works is we're leveling up our Tarek, we're leveling up our Draven. And the most important thing we have here is survival skills. Survival skills is a really, really nuts card with Draven uh, in particular. It's kind of like the only thing that makes survival skills works is our boy Draven. But with spinning axes, being able to just add zero mana, always threaten survival skills. If the opponent goes in for uh, an opportunity and just like misses and we have the blowout, they just lose on the spot, right? And that's just absolutely crazy. We can also use survival skills to sometimes protect Tarek. Um, overall, I mean, at the end of the day, you've seen a clip of this deck already and you'll see the deck played out more. I don't really need to explain all of it, but had a lot of fun today. And uh, yeah, enjoy the clips from today's live stream. Put on the hat, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, why man? Nobody's actually activated that fucking thing yet. Why would you do that? Ugh. Board? You guys, okay, do you guys really want the KDA board? I like the KDA board, but you guys all begged me to switch it off. So this is the noise, he's attacking on evens. Arachno Sentry isn't really core enough to the identity of our deck. I think we just keep survival skills and just mil, uh, fish aggressively for Draven. Nice. I mean, Draven plus survival is just, we're just good, right? All right, how's this poll doing? Looks like Yes is winning on the KDA board. If you don't want to hear KDA music, you got to go to the polls. Man, voter turnout is at an all-time low. I think everyone's just so desensitized. Nobody cares anymore. I literally one-trick that board. It is a good board. I like it. I like the music boards. I like KDA and I like Jinx. But every time I use them, it's always like after like an hour, you guys just beg me to switch off. And so I have to. 
Because I, I take care of you guys. Whee! That's the worst board. KDA is like a cancer. Okay, how many of you will literally leave the stream if I equip the KDA board? Raise your hand. Oh, that's a good draw. Wait, I think we're just good to win this game, guys. This actually looks kind of crazy. We, ha we actually have a hand. Like, we, we nutted all over this game. We need a Whirling Death. We need, like, a second Draven for Whirling Death. So, we have to ask, like, what I want to clone here. Uh, I guess it's just Pale Cascade? Like, pre-cloning Pale is fine. We don't have the permanent buff here, which is kind of sad. And to be able to get the Nightfall from Pale Cascade, we might have to pre-axe one of our things. Can we really need two hushes? God, this is actually a matchup where we might need two hushes. Do I actually kick one of the hushes? I think hush is a good card in this matchup. I'm pretty sure I'm about to regret this. It's in the noise. Axe the axe, but then I don't have survival skills during this combat. I don't know, maybe I didn't need it pre-combat. I mean, the Draven is getting like tough and five health. Yeah, maybe axing the axe was just fine. Oh, but attacking with Taric is kind of fucking terrifying. Dude, this deck, like, it's still not refined, but God, I see, I see real potential to this. If you discard two survival skills, do two units to get the buff. I'm pretty sure that survive. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing survival skills can't target on something that already has the effects. I'm pretty sure if you discard two of it, then the second strongest unit will get the buff. Hush! Pale! I mean, I guess that's an easy resolve. The sharpened resolve card is pretty nice. Hush! Man, why did I just lose my other hush for no reason? I mean, I guess I'm a husher too. I don't know, this is the kind of like, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this kind of effect shouldn't exist in the game, but there's a certain point at which like, it, it can make metas unhealthy. It's, it's, a, it's a delicate balancing process. This guy is nuts. Yeah, and the noise is crazy. So, I mean, I think we're just good to win this game again. I mean, survival skills with Taric just makes so much sense. Man, all of you guys who told me yesterday to put Taric in this deck, and I just, I apologize to all of you guys. You were right. Taric just makes sense. Like, you just can't argue with that. It just makes sense. Okay, Victor's got furry. Um, eh. Do I care? I mean, I'm not gonna need all this mana. I guess I can just sparkle fly here. <laughs> okay. I mean, passing can kind of only be good for me. Eteric does want to level up. We do need to be mana efficient. Does he have an attack here? If he attacks with Victor and I just like block like a normal human being, he's kind of screwed. He totally doesn't have an attack here. I guess I just Guiding Touch my Draven then. Um, my Draven's... So I want to level up the Taric. So yeah, I think I Guiding Touch my Draven. Not because my Draven's health matters, but because I want the I want the Taric trigger. Because I want to open attack and level Taric on like the first cast I do. So I guess I Guiding Touch Taric so that if I don't draw anything, I can at least clone a draw. If I get the if I get the permanent buff spell, then I can use it before this attack. So I I do sparkle fly. It's not an out. It doesn't help me on this combat. Um, so I think I just attack now. Swinging like this. Draven uh, Terex just giving Draven immortality here, which kind of allows him to attack into the victor. Yeah, this looks solid. I don't think I have to do anything else. We just want to we want to draw another card. It's kind of a ooh, that's a sick draw cuz we can whirling death during combat now too. This is this is a fun deck, dude. I think I'm going to play this deck all day. Like there's there's a lot of cool ways we can play games with this deck 
And there's a lot of cool ways that we can... That we can, like, maybe build this in a bit of a different way. So, in some kind of ideal universe, I would try to level Draven here. Leveling Draven is pretty sweet. He is immortal, and I can discard one of the fans and just not care. I think that's worth doing. I'm kind of wasting the Whirling Death. But leveling Draven, I think, is kind of important pressure. Kind of just want to level Draven here. And he can't really stop this. I'm sure I won't regret just throwing away my Whirling Death like this. I'm sure I never regret this. But yeah, I think, I think there's actually a good deck building niche for like Draven survival skills things. I actually, I kind of wonder what would happen if you like, if you built like an Ezreal Draven burn deck, cut out some of like the tri-beam stuff and just ran like three survival skills and three Draven's biggest fan. Like that, there might actually be something there. Maybe it would need a tweak from that, but like. I don't know, I feel like Draven and survival skills as a combo is currently being underutilized. It's actually kind of insane. Like, it blows out so many spots. And maybe a rally with Tarek? Oh no. Tarek doesn't really use rallies very well. So, when we're evaluating the, the, the value of synergy points, we have to like ask ourselves what cards really need. Like, on its surface, Tarek looks like he can use Rally. God, I can't see him without seeing Grappler. I, wh when, uh, when I look at Tarek, like, you can look at support and be like, okay, he wants to attack multiple times, so Rally allows us to get extra attacks in. It's kind of like the same thing with Riven, right? Like, Riven, whenever you ready the attack token, she has, like, a synergy point. So, you might think, well, what if we just Rally, then we get it to attack there. But, the problem is, like, that's not really logical. Decks, like, all cards gain value every time they attack. And the thing is, so, you have a card that you want to enable an extra attack, but why does that mean we're using Rally instead of just, like, playing defensive cards that will allow me to get an extra attack in later, right? Like, there's no... Rally doesn't allow an extra attack more than just having, like... Uh, survivability does, for example, right? Like, if we just survive, then we also have an extra attack, right? So we have to evaluate cards by kind of like a list of what they really need. The thing Tarek needs the most is, you know, good buffs to... good buffs to clone, and then he needs a card that's, you know, worth buffing, and then he needs a win condition, which is Might, which is why we're, I think, forced into Noxus. And, of course, this deck has alternate win conditions as well. And... The last thing Tarek needs is to not lose the early game, right? Which is kind of... That's actually even part of the reason we have Draven's biggest fan. Um, it's mostly for consistency, but Arachnoid Sentry is really helping that. Look, we just drew it. It's helping us not get blown out by some of these early positions. It helps fix our bad hands by buying us time. And by stalling out the opponent's game plan, we can buy ourselves an extra turn to attack with the Tarek anyway. Like, when you think about it, there's no... We can look at this kind of effect and be like, oh, if I rally, then I get an extra attack, but kind of like doing everything will give you an extra attack, right? Hmm. Why is this Victor life stealing? Why is this Victor got spell shield? Uh, hang on a second. <laughs> Wait, this is a bit of an issue. Hmm. I think I just survival skills. I mean, it's the rare spot where we just play it from hand, I think. Whee! I mean, Victor doesn't have Overwhelm, so he's not scary yet. But this game's gonna go on a few more turns. I mean, we have blockers to everything, right? Do I need to fan here? My Draven's technically unkillable, so fan's never getting higher value than right now, anyway. He's at full HP. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna heal to full. This is this is literally an unstoppable force versus an immovable. Mm, wait a second. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh dear. 
That's a pretty big threat. All of his units seem to have overwhelm here. 61. You got me the noise. <laughs> Jesus. Dude. <laughs> it was actually... <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he had like the dream combo. Like the perfect, like full hands, exact meta point. And I think I might have killed him the turn after if he didn't have life steal and if he didn't have the exact mana point for that. <laughs> Dude, that was a sick game. Raptor O. Is that uh is that Raptor the guy? Or is that just a similar name? If only you didn't discard your hush. Yeah. Wait, that's a good point. If only I hadn't discarded that hush, I could have like actually won the game. You you make a very good point. I knew I was forgetting something there. Do we keep Tarek in the opener? I think I have to. Who's Raptor? I mean, I don't know if this guy is Raptor, but Raptor is like, I don't know. I don't actually know who Raptor is. He like, I think he, does he work for Riot? Does he play card games? He made a deck at one point. This is an important Draven's biggest fan. If we didn't have that fan in hand, if that was like any other card, this guy would have like had a really good time with this Corsair and his deck plan and just blowing me out. That would have felt kind of bad. So I think we probably need to float the mana here. It's pretty important to have banked mana. We're attacking on evens, so you can see next turn we Draven, the turn after we Taric, and then if we've drawn Pale Cascade in the next two cards, then we can clone the Cascade with our banked mana, right? For example. Um, and of course, drawing Cascade in two cards here is pretty likely. I mean, that's a very legitimate, what is that? A, it's almost 20% chance. It's like 15. So playing around your top decks is, actually matters. It's fucking unfair, dude. This is not a good survival skills. Like, I'm using axe without being able to actually get a strike with the axe, and we don't really have much else. But what this does allow me to do is, like, clone my Guiding Touch and heal the Draven back up, so that's nice. Um, I have to play Tarek first. I'm ready to shine. There's a good chance he'll force my Guiding Touch on the Draven instead of the Tarek here, which is really sad. I wish I could do this in one action instead of two, but if he uses his action now to force touch, then I don't get to double touch. And that's a good example of what that would look like. And I do have to do it. I can't, like, just give away the Draven. But, in, in all honesty, Static Shock is pretty low value. Like, if it was going to be a card, I'm glad it was at least Static Shock and not, like, Mystic. Because he spends four mana on it. It doesn't really do a whole lot else for him. Um, if I had a different hand, I could sometimes abandon the Draven. God, there's almost a possibility that just playing for Sparklefly instead could have been correct, but there's just no way that's true here. And we got Passcade, which is nice. So this is a good Sparklefly turn. If he has Thermo or Mystic, we've got Passcade. Uh, more likely we'll use Resolve here though. It's a brave attack. That's kind of a weird attack. What does he have at two mana to take that attack? This is an attack that it might not represent a threat. It might just be he really wants to get the triggers on Gangplank in a game like this. So I think I'm pretty safe doing this. If Tarek dies, hmm, that's kind of a bad thing if Tarek dies, huh? I guess. Tarek is the one that the survival skills will hit. But if he lets the combat through first, and he has like a Thermo or something, then Tarek is still the one survival skills hits, because it's a 3-2 and it costs the most mana. So survival skills hits Tarek, whether it's before or after combat. So it just works. Whew. All right, we should win now. We have a really good board. We're safe from pretty much everything. And again, it's not really like an ideal survival skills. But I mean, when when we can when we can just like keep our unit away from his removal like this, it's just kind of game winning. Like it's kind of insane. So Tarek can level this turn if I use 
Guiding. Oh, in this hand, I might want to clone Guiding. Cloning Blessing of Targon is kind of just better, though. I don't know. Do I really need to draw more? I think I'd rather just clone Blessing of Targon. So I think I just open with Guiding Touch the Tarek. And then I like Blessing and buff Draven or something. I could buff Sparklefly. I think buffing Draven makes more sense here. I don't know. Do I really? Why am I buffing Draven? What am I talking about? This is just way better. Wait, is he dead? Wait, are you dead? Hang on, buddy. You're not dead here, are you? Yeah, deck's fucking nuts. 